As Joe Biden enjoys time with his family, the prospect of war may seem a million miles away. The US leader said he'll talk to his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, this week and isn't ruling out a meeting in person on January the 10th when talks are planned between the two powers. At the UN, Russia's deputy envoy emphasized the importance of the meeting. I don't think that our colleagues will uh, get away with some uh, blah, blah, blah thing, as Greta Thunberg puts it. So we really want uh, something serious uh, this time. It's not an ultimatum. Uh, it was also underlined several times by my foreign minister and my president. It's a constructive proposal, but it's the proposal that works for everybody and that is in the interest of everybody. Tensions have been constantly rising between the powers. This week, Russia held military drills on its western border, where a massive troop buildup has led to concerns that Mr. Putin plans to invade Ukraine. While Moscow denies this, it says that it will have to take adequate military technical measures if the West continues its aggressive course on the threshold of our home. All eyes are now set for the meeting on January the 10th. As we've been hearing, U.S. President Joe Biden is set to meet with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin next month over Moscow's ongoing tensions with Ukraine. Meanwhile, President Putin has also been holding talks with the Belarusian president Lukashenko, who increasingly relies on the Kremlin for his political survival. Ukraine remains vulnerable to an invasion from 100,000 Russian troops currently amassed on its border. Well, to discuss this further, I'm now joined by Peter Dickinson in Kiev. He is the Ukraine editor for the Atlantic Council. Thank you for joining us. So there's a lot of talking going on. And what does it all mean? And what's the mood like? Well, the mood in Kiev actually is quite festive, but cautious. Uh, people are getting on with the Christmas holidays, and there's a wonderful... Uh, wonderful seasonal holiday mood around the city of Kiev. But, of course, there is huge anxiety uh, that I think is in the back of a lot of people's minds about this, this, this very large invasion force and the, the alarming rhetoric that's coming out of the Kremlin. Uh, so there'll be a lot of people in Ukraine watching um, today's meeting between uh, Lukashenko and Putin in Russia uh, as another sign of the strengthening uh, ties between Belarus and Russia and the dependency, as you mentioned, of uh, Lukashenko on Putin, which effectively is transforming Belarus into a into an extension of Russia, which for Ukraine in a military sense has huge implications because the countries share a thousand kilometer border to the north of Ukraine. Now, Russian troops based in Belarus would uh, considerably expand the encirclement of Ukraine. And what about the talks with Biden? How are they being perceived? Uh, uh, People in Ukraine, of course, have, are, are, are concerned primarily that Ukraine could become a, uh, a sacrificial lamb or, or could be sacrificed in, in some form uh, to become a, you know, a geopolitical pawn in talks between Russia and, and, uh, and America. There is um, uh, what we could probably call a Munich syndrome, the sense that uh, Ukraine could be betrayed in, in some sort of grand deal. And there is a strong awareness that Russia seeks such a deal. Um, at the moment, the signs coming out of America is America will be, will be resistant to that, will not force Ukraine into any compromises that Kiev is unwilling to make itself. Uh, but of course, there, are, there, there is past precedent for this and, and the general uh, response to Russia's uh, aggressive tone and the, the eight-year conflict, which is ongoing, uh, the, the simmering conflict in the east of Ukraine, uh, does not inspire confidence in Ukraine. So of course, people are hopeful that these talks will help resolve or turn down the, uh, the current tensions, uh, but there is, there is anxiety. They fear that Ukraine could somehow end up coming out of this as the loser. Um, and there's always been a, a mantra in Kiev, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. Um, that was very much the case throughout the Parish Poroshenko presidency. Um, Vladimir Zelensky, the, the current president, has tried to maintain this, but it's actually, uh, it's, there is a sense that he's losing ground in this direction, that there are increasingly talks taking place uh, about Ukraine without Ukraine. Um, and that, of course, is feeding these fears, this mu these fears of a, of a Munich 38 scenario in which Ukraine is presented with a fait accompli and told basically, well, this is the reality. We are not going to, the West will not support you anymore. You have to make your terms or accept the terms that we have agreed with Russia over your heads. So that, this, is, this is a constant uh, fear in Ukraine. And at the moment, I think probably that fear is, is, is heightened 
uh, given the nature of the Russian rhetoric and given the the initial response from the Western powers. So there'll be a lot of a lot of uh, concern in the coming weeks as we lead up to these talks in January. Peter Dickinson, thank you very much for speaking to Euronews.